Hello creative art friends and welcome to this channel. My name is Miriam. Well, today we are going to paint this cute little beetle you can see here in the background. And to begin with, I will show you a quick way to transfer an, a reference photo to your watercolor papers. And then I will guide you step by step in how to paint this beetle. But let's begin. Okay. So here you can see I have my reference photo on my iPad. Perhaps you have a reference photo from a magazine or a book or something like that. So you use that. But I find most of my in images online and I have them here on my iPad. And then I'm going to use this tracing paper. And this is really handy if you want to get a reference photo transferred to your watercolor paper quite fast. Um, it will save you some time, I believe. Um, and then I have already made it. <laughs> but you put the um, tracing paper on top of the image on your iPad. And perhaps you want to turn up the light a little bit so you can see better. And then I use a soft pencil, a size 4B. It could also be 6B. And the B means that the lid in the pencil is quite soft. Um, and then I use some tape here. And then I just begin to draw the beetle. And go all the way around the edges. And then you will end up with this. And the next step is to turn the paper around and that will also mean that your image will be turned around so you have to uh, just be mindful of that uh, and on your ipad you can turn the image around if you prefer it that way and then i decide where i want this to be on my pair Mm, perhaps I want it to be a little bit to the side, like this. And then I'll take a piece of tape and just make sure the, the tracing paper won't move. Oops. And then I will pick up a size. HB pencil, it's a little bit harder and you can always just give it a go with this sharpener and then I just begin to draw here on top of the tracing paper and then the lid from the other pencil will be transferred to your watercolor paper. So this is quite a fast way to get your image uh, onto a paper. At least uh, it takes quite a bit of while if you're going to paint it by hand yourself. So I can't do that, but I often use this method because I would rather use my time on painting than on <laughs> drawing a reference uh, down to my paper. So yeah, but it's up to you if you want to use this method. So now I have transferred the image and as you can see it's quite light so I'll just go in with a mechanical pencil and just enhance in places I, where I think I need to it the lines to be more visible. Um, so just use a little bit of time on that. I've also transferred the leaf in the background or the leaf where the beetle is sitting upon so yeah i will just go in and once i finish that i have this soft rubber or net gum i believe it's called and I'll just go in because I can see I got pencil lines all over the place because it's such a soft pencil you use. And I'll just dab the paper and dab off some of the lid from the soft pencil. 
and here are the colors we are going to use for this painting i've listed it down below in the description so you can find it there and this is my watercolor palette and i i've already mixed some of the colors um, and here i have a palette with shimmery watercolors and i think i will go with something that had has a green glow or a yellow glow or perhaps a neutral so it, this is from Van Gogh and they are quite nice then I have some masking fluid because I want to put masking fluid on the beetle so I can make a nice background without thinking about ruining my beetle so yep and I use this rubber pin um, I don't know what it's called actually but it's quite good for putting masking fluid on paper and then when the masking fluid is completely dry I wet the whole paper with a large brush and then I begin to dab in some of the neutral color and I'm mixing up some green color in my palette I'm dabbing in and making sure that the paper is taped down very good so the paper won't bulk then I just dab in color all over the background and yeah and the lighter green colors you can see in the palette is uh, the green mixed with the yellow I have listed in the description so I'm using these colors to and mixing them together to get these different kinds of greens and you have to remember that the paint will dry up much lighter than uh, when it's wet so you have to take that into consideration i do want the background to not be uh, so dark again so i will not use very very dark colors and here i've mixed in some paints gray i believe with the green so i'm making the color a little bit darker but it's still quite a watery mix because i want the background to be not too dark then i dab in some of the brownish color i believe it's a mix between burned umber and buff titanium and now i'm changing my brushes to a size 6 brush and i go in with clean water drops and let the whole thing dry completely before i continue with the painting and now i'm going to paint the leaf so i begin with wetting the whole leaf with clean water then i have mixed up some of the permanent green with a little bit of the paint's gray and then i go along the edge of the leaf and then i rinse my brush and drag out the color with a clean brush that way you get quite a sharp uh, outline and a softer color uh, into the middle of the leaf and i quite like that effect in the leaf now i go in with a darker color i've added some more paints gray to the green to the permanent green and here i'm lifting off after the leaf is dry i'm lifting off some paint with a size 2 brush so that you can see the leaf nerve and now when everything is dry i go in with a dark green color and go along the edge of the white i've just lifted off and now it's time to paint in some of the veins on the leaf and i just do it like this paint a vein and then i add some color and soften the edges and i do that all over the leaf and also add some smaller veins now everything is dry and then i go in with a dark green mix and i wet the edges soften the edges with clean water and just put in some darker color on the leaf 
and yeah, softening the edges so it will blend nicely on the paper. Don't want too many hard edges, and it's also nice you can see the lines I've made previous uh, through the color. And now I just enhance the vein running all the way down the leaf. And now it's time to paint in the small branch uh, where the bug is sitting or the beetle. Quite a watery mix of the burnt umber. I don't want this branch to have too many details because it's a little bit, bit in the background. Now I'm adding a little bit of the paint gray to the mix and making the other side of the branch a little bit darker. And I allow these two colors to flow together uh, because I've wet the area first, they will blend very nicely together. So, But as I mentioned, not too many details. Then everything needs to dry completely. And now I'm removing the masking fluid very gentle with my finger. I prefer to use my finger to do the job uh, because I get a better feeling with the paper doing that. Then I just enhance some of the drawing, as you can see here, so uh, I can see where to put my colors. And now it's time to mix up some yellow. And I mix up two different kinds of yellow, hence a yellow light and hence a yellow deep. Then I wet the area I'm going to paint, and that is almost the whole peel. And then I begin to drop in the yellow color. This is quite a light color, so um, I don't have to be too careful to where to put the color. Because it's such a light color and I know I will paint on top of it. And here you can just see the reference photo. It's quite nice to have that. And that will be there for the rest of this video. So it's easier for you to see where to put the colors. And I'm working with the two yellow colors now, the light and the darker color. And here I'm adding in, in some of the green. And I believe I have mixed some yellow into my permanent green. And here it's a darker green, the permanent green mixed with paints gray. And I go in along some of the edges where I can see there's some shadow areas and just dabbing it in. And I'm still working wet and wet. really like how the colors blend on the paper. It gives such a nice effect. Then I go around places where there's sort of these dots on top of the beetle and I go in around these dots uh, because there will be uh, some darker green colors around there. And then I'm just building up the painting layer by layer, still working wet and wet. And now I'm mixing up some of the cobalt teal and I will just go around the dots with my size 2 brush. Just to put a little bit of that blue color in and I'm also going along some of the edges on the beetle. And I will also put some of this color on the beetle's legs. Like you see me do here. This will be quite the quite light parts on the legs of the beetle, and it will looks uh, it will look shiny once you've added the darker color. Then I've grabbed my size six brush again, and I'm just wetting the edge and dabbing in some darker colors, and I'm working layer by layer. This is. Uh, my preferred way of using the watercolors, uh, just building up the painting, then allowing the layers to dry and then continue with the next layer. And this is a green mix of the permanent green and the Hansei yellow light. That's, that's what's giving this quite shiny green color or bright green color. 
that the beetle has. And I go in in different places with this green color around the the dots on the beetle and also up here, as you can see. And I always surf the edges with some clean water all the time. <laughs> Don't want the hard edges. And now I'm adding some of the Hense Yellow Light. I want the color to be a bit stronger. And then I go in with the Hense Yellow Deep afterwards. And again I'm going in with the Hense Yellow Deep. And again, I'm adding some darker green colors here on the side of the beetle. This is where there are some shadow areas and the beetle seem a little bit darker uh, along some along the sides. So, and uh, when I put more color in the middle of the beetle, I also need, need to put some stronger color on the sides of the beetle. So it will look balanced. I'm slowly building up. And now I have mixed my Interthrone Blue, I believe it's called. <laughs> and uh, this mix has no paint gray in it, but it will have later on. But I begin with this blue color and I paint in all the dots on the beetle. And also the legs and the antennas and I'm using my size 2 brush to do the job because I want to be quite precise working here and yeah just take your time with it don't rush it will be better if you just take your time and next I will be painting this blue color in all around the beetle and the other legs and the antennas and here you can see the result of the first layer. Now I have mixed up some of the Hansa Yellow Deep and I am going in to enhance some of the colors on the beetle. I wanted the colors to be quite strong on the beetle um, because the beetle is the focal point so I want all the details and good strong colors. And now I have grabbed my shimmer curls and I will go in with this yellowish shimmery color. And I will go in with that on top of all the yellow parts of the beetle. This will give a nice shine, I believe, to the top of the beetle because it is quite shiny and glittery. <laughs> Now I'm putting the shiny color on the green parts of the beetle. And again going back to the yellow part. Now I'm adding some green color because some of the colors got lost when I put on the shimmery color so I have to put in and enhance with some more of the green and the yellow so I'll just do that 
it won't cover up completely the shimmery colors I just put in, but um, yeah, I just needed to, the colors to be a little bit stronger. Here I have my size 2 brush and I have mixed up the blue with some of the paints gray. And I go around the edges now and go over all the places where I used the blue before. And enhancing them with this darker color. And also the dots on the beetle I'm painting in with this darker blue mix. And the eyes of the beetle and the side of the beetle. And now I just needed to en enhance something here on the beetle. It's quite difficult to call it something because I do not know what it's called. <laughs> not even in my own language, Danish. So, <laughs> But you can see what I'm doing, so hopefully you get it. And here it's the Hansa Yellow Deep. And... I'm also adding in some of the blue and allowing the colors to mix together so we will get uh, this shadow area around here. Yes, and now I'm just adding some more green to this side of the bill And going in with a clean damp brush and just lifting off some of that color again. So and going in with some darker green colors as well and again the, I'm wet, working wet in wet so the paint will flow together very nicely And now it's just, you know, going around the beetle, enhancing in places where I think it needs a little bit of something. It's all the details. And again, going in with the dark blue mix and uh, enhance. Because some of it got lost when I put in the green color. And um, yeah. And now you can really see the beetle come to life, I think. Uh, it's quite a beautiful buck. And just to put in a little bit of highlight lights here and there, I'm grabbing my white gouache and just dabbing in a little bit of highlight in some places. So you can really see some reflections on the beetle. I'm going in where the colors are light uh, and just enhance those places and also a little bit here on top of the bill along the edge here. Make sure not to overdo it because then it will look unnatural. Just a little bit. And I'm using my size 2 brush for this. And now I'm going to make some splatter. So I've mixed up quite a watery mix of the blue. And then I protect the beetle and just dab in some splatter. Then I dry the whole thing with my hairdryer and use my hairdryer when I remove the masking tape so it won't tear the paper. There you go, the finished painting. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Be well and see you again in another video. Bye bye.